Cool guys. Fire away. Uh, Patrick, what was the, uh, when you, were you surprised when you heard the Steelers were interested in just your reaction and your willingness, obviously? Yeah, um, I wasn't surprised because uh, we kind of made, almost made something happen last year, you know, having, you know, conversations with, uh, with Grady and Coach Tomlin last year, but, you know, obviously wasn't able to, to make it happen. But this go around, you know, um, in a different situation, you know, losing a key component to their secondary and Cam and felt like they needed a guy that have some of those same attributes as a smart, tough, physical football player. And and I, and I wanted to be a part of this pedigree and this, this identity that the Stiller organization and, and team uh, brings to the NFL. You know, um, very always competitive. Uh, Coach Tomlin is always going to have his time, his guys in position to win no matter what the uh, circumstances are. And um, for me, being in a latter part of my career, you know, I wanted to be a part of a, a story, uh, a story, a very story franchise, and what better franchise it, uh, that you would want to be with than the Pittsburgh Steelers? Patrick, uh, Brooke Pryor with ESPN. What is your relationship like with Mike Tomlin? You said something almost happened last year, but just how well do you know him and how much was that a factor in deciding to come here? Well, you know, um, with Coach Tomlin having an opportunity to coach my cousin, um, Brian McFadden, so I have a, had an opportunity to cross path with him you know, numerous of times uh, before I got to college and obviously, you know, coming out of LSU, getting prepared for the draft, you know, having uh, communication throughout that process and and just watching them from afar, you know, anytime we played them, it was, it, it was just always a great deal of respect um, between us, you know, and, and and when you see, you know, the, the his coaching style, you know, how much his players talk about him, um, his sayings, you know, you, you just want to be a part of something like that. And when you have an opportunity, you don't you, you don't want to waste that opportunity. And um, on the second go around, um, you know, I felt like I, I definitely have a lot left in the tank. I can provide a lot, you know, to whatever team I was going to land on. But I felt like this was the best fit for me um, just because what coach can do for my career as a DB. One of his sayings that jumps out that you've yeah, heard a number uh, of times. Yeah, it's a big game because we're in it. <laughs> Jeff Ashburn from KDK Radio here in Pittsburgh. Uh, what was it about, what did Bryant tell you about the Steelers and how much did that play into your decision? Bryant? McFadden. Oh, you okay. Did? Yeah, um, just telling me how loyal, you know, the fans, the organization, the Rooney um, family is. Uh, just how the passion, you know, that this city have for the not only the Pittsburgh Steelers, but for you know sports in general. You know, for me, you know, and being a defensive player, when you have the fans, you know, making it hard for an, for an opposing team, even on the road, because I can remember being a Cardinal fans and seeing a bunch of terrible towels taking over that stadium. So, being a defensive player and going on the road and seeing your fans do that. It makes you want to play that much harder. It makes you want to bring that W home uh, that much more. And, you know, so it, it 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 is quite an honor to finally be a part of you know this organization, this this uh, this rich tra uh, tradition um, that this organization has. So um, very very blessed. And Brian told me that this fan base is like no other. So I'm excited to be a part of it. Patrick. Uh, UK Pittsburgh Sports, uh, Chris Alec. Um, your pedigree speaks for itself on what you've accomplished in, in this in this league. Um, coming into this particular scheme, how comfortable are you in like playing outside, moving inside, and doing a bunch of different things in this particular league? Chris, Chris, it's funny that you asked that because, you know, going into year 13, you know, I always used to beg my coaches, like, man, just put me other places. Like, because I always felt like, if you're able to have, you know, a quality athlete, you know, you do, you just don't want to limit him into one solid thing. You want to make it hard on a quarterback. You want to make it hard as possible on a quarterback um, throughout down. So if you know a guy's going to be lined up in a certain spot every single position, he's going to know how to avoid that guy. So when you have guys that have not only special talents on, you know, covering, but implementing a little blitz, implementing a little post post safety or 
rob or safety or whatever the case may be, that's going to make it harder for opposing offenses to game plan for us. And, you know, I don't know what the, uh, what the plan is just yet, but I'm definitely open for it because, um, you know, it's no secret. I'm not 28 years old anymore. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I'll be 33 here in July, but the body feels great. You know, but I want to be able to be in position to continue to help my team, but also be in a position that's going to continue to help me be successful because I can't run, you know, behind these young receivers down in and down out. It's all about putting me in, 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 in the right position, teammates, uh, and mixing and matching coverages to make it hard for opposing offenses. Patrick, Joe Rudder with the Pittsburgh Trib. A lot of talk here since you signed about what number you're going to wear. <laughs> I don't know yet, but I know seven is off limits for uh, sure. <laughs> um, uh, we'll, uh, you know, I had opportunity to go down and, um, and see the options that's, uh, that's available. Haven't really um, uh, picked one just yet, but here in the near future, I will have a number. Patrick, I wanted to ask you, Mike Tabo from The Athletic. You mentioned on your live stream about how the way you train you think prepared you at this stage in your career. I was curious just to kind of follow up. What kind of things have you done differently as you've gotten more veteran in your career and how have you maybe also changed your approach on the football field? For me, you know, the more, you know, I came into the league in 2011. So the, the volume of plays each and every year has gone up. You know, so I have to make sure that I prepare my body to be able to sustain, you know, a 16, 17 week, 18 week now season. And another thing that a lot of guys may not understand and know how to train is the mind, you know, cause this is a, it's a physical sport, but it's also a mental sport. You know, if you want to be able to have a longevity career, be able to block out the outside noise that can hinder you for having, you know, a longevity career. So. For me, just you know, training the strongest muscle in my body, which is my which is my mind, and also just continue to train my confidence. You know, because if I don't have confidence confidence within myself, or see it for myself, nobody else will. You know, so those are always you know my two pillars that I lean on. You know, when I'm training in the off season, and and and, and the third thing is focus and practice on things that I'm going to use in games. I'm not using I'm not wasting using wasted movements cuz like I said I'm not 23 28 years old uh, uh years old anymore. So I have to be efficient when I when I train. You know, so those are some of the things that I do to make sure that uh that my body is well equipped um for whatever the season's going to bring to me. As a guy with Brian Brian back from the Post Gazette. I know you mentioned, you know, this being a good fit for you. Um, I know you said shortly before free, free agency started, you wanted to try to win a ring somewhere at this point in your career. What is it about the Steelers beyond Mike Tomlin that makes you think this team can do that? Is it the defensive uh, stars they have? Is it the young offensive core with guys like Kenny Pickett and some of the players you faced a couple of years ago? Uh, mm -hmm. You know, what, what kind of brought you to that point with that? Um, a little bit of all of it. You know, I think the defense, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, you got stars on all three levels. You know, then you go on the offensive side of the ball, did a great job over the last couple of years of picking great young talent. You know, you got receivers, you got running back, you got a, uh, you know, now you have a, 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 a nice young dual threat um, quarterback that kind of had, and doesn't he wear the glove too? Two gloves. Two gloves. So now he has a little Ben in him as well. You know, Ben used to rock the, uh, the left glove, but um, um, you can see that he he has that pedigree because once he stepped into the lineup, you just seen a, a different identity and a and a new pizzazz uh, that came with him being in the lineup. So um, it's a lot of great talent around him. When you have you know Coach T, that's going to continue to get the best out of out of players. So so everything's there. Now it's just going to be upon us to go out there and execute the game plan, stand healthy because. Uh, Best teams necessarily don't always win. You know, the healthiest team sometimes win. You know, so we want to be. We wanna, we, I'm sure the you know the training staff and coach would do a great job to make sure that you know the guys are, are their bodies are prepared to go. But at, at the end of the day, it's talent all all across the board on on, the, on, on this football uh, roster, and I'm excited to be a part of it. And I uh, just can't wait to see you know 
what Coach T has uh, got cooked up, you know, to, to, to try to get us to that next level. Hey, I forgot to introduce myself the first time, Jerry. You like yep. the Post Gazette. Um, any memorable games or moments against the Steelers? And how many um, how many golf courses would you guess you played with Larry Fitzgerald in Western Pennsylvania? <laughs> um, I played about four golf courses um, here in Pennsylvania with Fitzy. Played Lower Valley. Uh, Fox Chapel, Oakmont, uh, Allegheny, uh, I think Field House, if I'm not mistaken. The Field Club played there, so we played uh, played a quite uh, a couple courses around uh, around Western Pennsylvania. But the funniest story that I have about Coach Mike T is my rookie season. Maybe maybe it was my second season. I can't remember which year it was, but I had blocked a field goal the game before, or even the first game of the season, but because we played Pittsburgh quite early in the season. But anyway, he knew I had a good jump, you know, coming off the right side. So I can't remember who, who was the holder, but they never gave us the flash. I always had a good, you know, and any time the holder hold his hand up, I mean, the ball was coming. So they ended up giving me a flash. I jumped off sides, and I hurried up and tried to call a timeout. <laughs> Coach looked at me and told me, I got you. <laughs> Now, you had uh, five interceptions and 15 pass breakups last year. Those were 10 year highs for you. What do you feel like changed a lot to get your hands on the ball so much more last season? I think having an opportunity to see the ball. <laughs> you know, early, you know, early in my career, you know, I was just, like I talked about, being solely a man guy, being in the receiver space, disrupting this, the, the timing of, of the receiver and the quarterback at the line of scrimmage. So now, once, and I, like I said, I can, I can do it all. Like. I'm not in this. I haven't been in the league for 13 years, you know, just because I was good at one thing. You know, I was just really good at that, and that's all they wanted me to do. You know, so I can play whatever you know is asked of me. But when now with my ball skills, because think about it, I had 28 picks with my back against the quarterback, so I had to have you know the timing to be able to get my head back around to see it. So now have an opportunity to back paddle and see him set up and. Give me a, a a better indication when the ball is coming. You know, nine times out of ten, I'm gonna come down with it because now I have the opportunity to track the ball the entire way. You know, so I believe having the opportunity to see to see the quarterback, understanding routes, you know, breaking down combinations, I believe that's what helped me. You know, have the career uh, the year I had last year. With all the experience that you've had, you said 13 years in the league, how much do you like the mentor role? And is that something that the Steelers said, hey, we want you to help, you know, a young corner group, a young DB group, and maybe anyone that they bring in at the draft? Um, you know, I love that. I love that role. I'm the oldest of five, so it's kind of like in my nature, you know, ever since I've been, you know, ever since I can remember, you know, so they haven't expressed any of those, uh, any of that to me. But that's just something that comes with me. You know, no one have, no one has to tell me, you know, we think you should, you know, uh, help this guy out. You know, what I've what I've done so far in my career, um, I feel like I have so much that I can can share on to the next generation. And why would I want to hold on to that? You know, because I want to continue seeing guys you know, play as long as they want, accomplish the goals that they set out for themselves. So if there's a nugget or any advice that I can give them, I'm all for it. Do you know much about these guys that you're going to be playing with? I don't, I don't just yet. You know, um, honestly, I know, you know, you know, Cam, Meek, and I had the opportunity to work out with Meek uh, uh, when he first came out. Me and him share the same agent. Um, TJ, you know, I haven't met you know, met TJ on, on on the field a couple of times. We did play him, but you know, you know, no relationship outside of that. Um, you know, got a text from Kenny, so I'm excited to you know to, to get up here and, and, and finally meet him in person. But yeah, n no no real relationship just yet with my new teammates. But I cannot wait to get in this locker room and meet all the guys. Anything else, Patrick? You mentioned the uh, being in the league issue. This long, he came out of that 2011 draft. Uh, Who's a better player from the 2011 draft? You or Cam? <laughs> you had, there's two Cams in that draft now. Yeah, well, I'm <laughs> yeah, you know, I knew which one you was talking about. <laughs> um, I mean, 
It's three cams, and you got a Cam Jordan too. Right. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I give the crown to Cam Hayward. <laughs> <laughs> Good. All right, thanks everybody. All right, guys, happy to be here. Can't wait to see you guys more. Man, I love football. I love to play the game of football. I feel like football is played a certain way, and I'm going to play it that way. And I'm happy to be here. Old school, you know, smash mouth. I like that stuff. As you can see, I'm built for it. So I'm happy to be here. Nate, no track by not fan nation. First, does anybody call you Nate Kiebe instead of her? Man, I've, I can't even get into all the names that I've been called for my last name, but that's definitely one of them. Okay, well, I have a um, What's your relationship like with uh, Andy Weidel? Did, did you guys have any talks? When man, you Andy, Andy Weidel's the GOAT, man. He's, a, he's the man. Uh, no, uh, he was in Philly when I was in Philly, um, and uh, had that kind of had that connection coming here a little bit. Just happy to be here. Happy that you know to be in the same building as him. Nate Joe Rudder with the Pittsburgh trip. Do you, do you have familiar? I think you do on both sides, and do you have a preference on left or right? Man, I'll play punter if they want me to. <laughs> I'll play wherever, wherever coach tells me I'll play. Most of your history though is on which side? Uh, right, I think. Yeah. What was it about the Steelers that broke prior ESPN? I know you said you have the relationship with Andy, but what is it about the Steelers and the fit here that made you say this is where I want to be? It's the Steelers. Like, come on, what isn't there about it? Like, I'm, man, I, I don't have enough good things to say. Like, guys on the team have already reached out to me. Kenny reached out to me. Man, it just shows his leadership already. I'm just, I'm just happy to be here. I'm happy to be a part of this team. Nate Mike DeFabo from The Athletic. Just what kind of role do you envision for yourself this season? Whatever the coach tells me to do, I'm ready. Do you, was the possibility of potential starting part of what it takes to here? I'm just, I'm ready to play football. We're going to find out. Nate, uh, Mark Bolley from The Athletic. You seem like a real laid back guy. How do you go from that to turning into the nasty guy we see on film when we turn it on? I just, I love the game of football. I think it's an art. I think it should be played a certain way, and that's why I love to play the game. But I'm a great guy. <laughs> <laughs> you lull people to sleep thinking, hey, he's a nice guy, then he, you know, you no, I, no, I am a nice guy. I'm a nice guy. Great guy. Uh, I guess we'll find out. Do you have a preference on run block, pass block? Run block, yeah. Because a quarterback can't get hit when you run block, yeah. Hey, Brian Beckman from the Post Gazette. Uh, what do you know about this team from the outside? I know you played against them last year, but uh, you know what are kind of your impressions of the, the personnel uh, on either side of the ball, really? Studs everywhere. I think they're really building something here. I mean, they've been good for a long time. Coach Tomlin is an unbelievable head coach. I'm just, hopefully I can add. All right. Nate Jeff Hathaway from KDK Radio. What is it about Tom and your perception, and what, what are you most excited to try to learn from him or your coach? He's a winner. He's a winner. Nothing but respect for him. What did you learn last year with the Jets? I know you ended up getting a lot of work um, because of injuries, and there was you know some quarterback turnover, things like that. But what do you kind of take out of that experience um, that's made you maybe a better, more well-rounded player coming into this? Um, you know, just just always being ready to play. It was like that for me in Philly. I played a bunch of different positions, you know, and I got an opportunity and I just I love I love opportunity. So I made my career on it. So I'm gonna keep trying to do the same. Well you gotta talk about you know it's the Pittsburgh Steelers and you know how it's obvious why you wanna play for them. Is there a time you remember, maybe when you were younger where you know you started to learn about who the Steelers are or something you remember that stands out that sort of formed that impression for you? I mean, when I went to Stanford, you know, uh, David DeCastro was a Steeler, a great, a legend. And, like, I just – we would watch his games on Sunday in the weight room, just watch him out there just dominating. And it's just – man, it's like how I want to play football. Like, I respect it. I want to be like him. Do you know Dave at all? 
No, I'm just a big fan. How much of an adjustment is, like, Pens I mean, you were in New York, you steeper Eagles now here. How much of an adjustment is weather, climate, all that from Hawaii and Stanford? I mean, I, I haven't even really thought about it. I just love football, so I'm happy to be here. I'll play in any weather. Have you ever played any center or tackle? And then the second part of the question is, you came out early. I did. And then you went undrafted. How has that shaped you as a player, as a pro? Uh, I got, I definitely got a chip on my shoulder. I mean, you know, I feel like people label me or say my limitations and stuff. So every year I'm just trying to work, improve, and just be a player, a real player. Oh, uh, it's, it's over. I already, <laughs> I came in the building screaming it like, come on, let's get him here. Nick Herbig, stud. <laughs> Absolute stud. I should be his agent. <laughs> oh, if there's one guy I can block, it's Nick Herbert. <laughs> I didn't finish last season on, on IR. How are you health-wise? Has it held you back at all or anything? Best, best I ever felt. Ready to rock. Hey, what was that conversation like with Kenny? And did that kind of lead to even more enthusiasm? For I mean, I just, it was unbelievable. Like, I, I had a great leader when I was in uh, Philadelphia with Jalen Hurts, and he just, the fact that he just like reached out to me just made me have so much, even I already had so much respect for him, but even more just like how much of a leader he is, and I'm just excited to be, to be around him, be on his team. Two more. Do you know much about Pat Meyer and what they're trying to do with him, as, with his offensive line and no. style and type of things like that that they play? I just, I just know what I got to do when he tells me to do it. I'm curious, just growing up in Hawaii, just what's the football culture like there? How would you explain to people, you know, how much importance you guys place in that? Um, just want to say this out there: St. Louis in Hawaii is the best high school in Hawaii. Um, Tyson Alu Alu was here, same high school, stud, legend. Um, we love football. We love to play the game, and it's a big thing. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to represent. Are you Hawaii or just from Hawaii? No, nah, I'm just from Hawaii. All right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks, thanks, thanks. 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 thanks.